G'day world, Chris Hogan coming to you for Me Media and I'm here with Gary V, the ever famous Gary V, Chairman of VaynerX and CEO of VaynerMedia. Correct. How are you, mate? I'm well. Welcome to Australia. I Thank know you. you've been down under before. I have. Welcome back. Thank you. Mate, how are you building wealth beyond your service business? Um, by building brand. More than anything else, more than my investments, um, the number one way I'm creating legacy, which is far more important to me than wealth, and wealth creation is by building a brand. There's nothing that is off limits for me if I want to enter it. If I want to start the biggest real estate brokerage in the world tomorrow, Vayner Realty is a player. I'm building brand. Yeah. So, that's how. Yeah, good. Mate, some have said your personal social media and stage time is self-serving. How do you respond? It's probably similar to what you just said. <laughs> you mean self, like the content that I put out is, I it's, think- It's serving you, not your customers, not your clients. My Vayner Media clients or the yes. people? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, in a world where I work 16 hours a day and I spend 11 and a half to 13 hours being the CEO and COO of Vayner Media, there's not a single CEO in the advertising agency world that puts more hours in than I do. Yeah. And so if I'm finding two hours uh, elsewhere, I'm not super worried about that. There's way more vacation time and side time and when when the CEO of, a, of Ogilvy is watching Netflix, is she or he coming at the expense of their clients? That's laughable talk by people who are competing with me in business and I respect it. Uh, but there's a reason that GE and Pepsi and Diageo and, and Mondelez are seven, eight year clients. They're not doing it because I'm charismatic on stage, they're doing it because they're getting business results. Right on. I also think talent matters more than time. LeBron James can put a lot more points in a basketball game in three minutes than I can in three years. That's sure. my response to that. <laughs> sure, sure. So, uh, mate, how, what do you do daily to build mental resilience and stay positive? I think that was done a long time ago. I think adversity and love in my childhood answered that every day. Like, I keep things in perspective, but that was ingrained in me through having an immigrant upbringing and an over-loving mom and, you know, so I think. Do you have to remember that though? Like I do think it's practice. I do think it's, you know, something bad happens and then I have to go into, well, maybe my mom would die today from a heart attack instead of this bad business deal and which one do I care about most? Of course, if this business deal was, an, instead of a negative, tripled, but my mom died, would I care? Of course not. No. And so I practice perspective on a daily basis. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. I, I, stand, I stay talking to myself and I keep things in perspective. Mate, I find a lot of your social media advice um, very tactical. Far, far, you know, act fast, measure, improve. Is strategy done and dusted? Is strategy? Is it, you know, is strategy not important anymore? No, I mean, I think look, strategy matters. Somebody said something really interesting to me when they were taking a dig at me once, and they said, "Gary, I love Vayner Media. Here's the problem with Vayner Media. If I was on this side, of, and it was a glass window." and a door, he goes, in an office, he goes, if I was on this side and I told VaynerMedia to get to me, I feel like you guys would run through that glass wall instead of just opening that door. And I remember thinking like that was in an interesting observation, which I replied to, well, at least we're getting to you. And so, where, why I'm giving you that story is I think strategy matters quite a bit. Obviously, we would have gotten to him, but we would have had some bruises and some cuts and some bleeding and we might have bled to death before we got to him by running through glass. The right strategy there would have been to turn the doorknob and walk right in. Uh, I would argue, and it's fun to have Andy Kay here, who's on my team, who I rarely travel with, but I see him in my sight line. I would argue that the single thing that I'm best at is strategy. It's just not something I talk a whole lot about because thinking, hey cameras, ready? Be better at strategy, folks. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like, get yeah. smarter. Fair enough. You know, like, I, yeah. I don't like giving advice that is humble brag. What am I gonna walk around the world and tell everybody I'm super fucking smart? Like, what's that gonna do for anybody else? It makes me feel good if I'm insecure. Luckily for me, my parents went the other way and didn't allow me to be insecure. And so for me, I think strategy is what I'm built on. I was right about social media. 
Yes. I was right yeah. about, I am currently right about how to produce content for LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, Insta- as a matter of fact, not even for YouTube. I could be better at it. I'm not as good at thumbnail and headlines. I'm not as good. And that's why I'm not bigger. But I'm, I'm. So you think it's more. I think strategy is essential. What people are interested in and that's why you're creating that tactical sort of content. Not interested in. I'm empathetic to give them results. Sure. Fuck interest. They need tactics now. That's why I always tell everybody, watch what I'm doing, not what I'm saying. I'm yeah. not on TikTok for my health. <laughs> Sure. You know, so so I think strategy is everything. Hence, that leads me into fluffy, keeping up with the Joneses, don't be insecure, kindness. I'm so into strategy that I'm going to the tippy top of strategy, which could come across as frothy, but I think is uh, imperative. Cool, man. Right, uh, can influencer marketing and authenticity exist, coexist? Easily. And how? By being transparent. This coffee company paid me to tell you that I like it. I kind of actually do like it. Thank you. Sure. That was influencer marketing and I was authentic as fuck. Right. Or, hey, let's give a huge shout out to this coffee company, everybody, because if they weren't paying me to give awareness to it right now, I'd have to do my full-time job and you wouldn't be getting these other four pieces of content that you are getting value from. And oh, by the way, let me remind you, it's free. I'm not Netflix, you're not paying me 20 bucks a month. So yes, there's a very easy way to do it. The problem is most humans are not authentic. That's right, yeah. Do you think it's actually the the media's over-polished? In general? Yeah. Yeah, I think think it's over-polished and self-serving. You know, I think the reason I'm doing well is every time I put out a piece of content, I'm thinking what's in it for them, not what's in it for me. If I was thinking about what's in it for me, I would only talk about being smart. <laughs> yeah. I'm not showing my planes. No. You got planes. I don't have planes. All right. But what I'm saying is my planes. Sure. Nobody's getting the content of my, of my trophies. Mm. You understand? Yeah. So, okay. no, I think, I think, um, I think that a lot of people are playing it wrong and I think that a lot of people seem like they're winning when they're actually losing. Yeah. And I think time will tell. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're in for some big upsets, huh? I hope so. <laughs> I hope so because I don't, I, I don't like behavior that extracts money out of communities mm. when that was the only intent in, yeah. in the first place. Yeah. Are you seeing, are you still seeing resistance to your content marketing methodology or your methodology? Yeah. And and why do you think that is? Like, are they just laggards? Because it's hard. Right. People just don't get it? People get it, people don't want to do it. I get that you have to eat properly and work out every day to have a tremendous physique. Doesn't mean I want to do it. Twinkies are fun. (laughs) Sleeping in is fun. I'm out here, I mean, 90% 90% of the stuff that's gonna be said out there today versus what I say is gonna be completely contradictory. There is no passive income. Yeah. There is no, no. fucking shortcut. Yeah. There is no system. Yeah. Yeah. Bleed out of your fucking eyes and provide value and wait 30 years to build something meaningful. Who the fuck wants to hear that? Yeah. <laughs> There's resistance because it's hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why have you recently set your own bar to 100 or 200 pieces of content per day? Because I hope it's a thousand. Sure. Are you trying, I feel like it's, it's just creating anxiety in marketers too. If I could produce a thousand pieces of content a day, I would. And when I figure out how, I will. Uh-huh. There is no overexposure in a world of unlimited content. Yeah. This is not 1986 anymore. No. There aren't 36 channels and 12 magazines and 13 newspapers. No. There is no overexposure. Yeah. Nobody's big enough. There's too much. Yeah. Do you have a charity or cause that you align yourself with? Yeah, I mean, quite a few. I mean, I, I'm very, I'm, this is how I roll. Um, I sit on the board of Pencils of Promise and of Charity Water, but two nights ago, I donated a substantial five-figure investment to a person that has a sports card charity and they were looking for the sports card companies to match the amount he raised at this big national convention. They balked 
he DM'd me and I said yes, but I told him not to pop publicize it. I think one thing that people know about my content is, whether it's politics, whether it's the nonprofit work, there's certain places I don't go yeah. because I don't think our society's good at collaborating and understanding it. I think most people that talk about their nonprofit work socially are using it to disguise their selfish behavior. So I don't feel compelled to go crazy on it. Sure. At the same token, I want exposure for them, much like I would answer your question right now and give details of what I do. So yeah, there's tons of things. I'm very into the random GoFundMe. Uh, uh, I'm very into, and Tyler knows this, I do a ton for my own employees. Right on. You know, and so I think everybody gets to choose how they want to do it. Is that, is that what floats your boat, boat the most? Like, makes you happy, I guess happy? Like, is it helping people around you? I, I think I'm selfish and selfless, like a lot of people. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. I get enormous happiness of buying something at a garage sale for $3 and selling it for eight. I also get a lot of excitement to uh, fill out the GoFundMe of an employee whose house burnt down and they lost all their stuff. They both feel great. Yeah. And I think people think we have to choose one or the other. Yeah. And I think that's a conversation that would really help society right now because we've gone way too extreme left and right and uh, we need a little bit of both. What is the question that you would want asked of you? I think the one thing I've been thinking a lot about is as my persona has gotten bigger, there's less questions about the fact that since the day I turned 22, I've been running a business up until this moment with successful hyper growth as the CEO and COO of, of those companies, both in the wine business and the ad world and I've done it without raising capital and I've been building monster companies and I think people don't even think I run VaynerMedia right now because I'm Gary V. So I think more questions around operations and how do I actually build businesses with no capital into monster businesses from scratch in short periods of time uh, would probably feed my selfish needs to remind people I go on stage because I'm an operator, not because I'm a commentator. Yeah. And who's your best latest hire then? I'm sorry? Who's your favorite latest hire? Like, that's changing Oh, that's a great question. Uh, Sarah Bauman runs London for us. I'm obsessed with her. It's only a month in, but she has proven an emotional intelligence and intellect, EQ, IQ, juggernaut, and I'm super excited that she's on board. Who's your best first hire? The best first hires I've ever made have been best friends. Brandon, really? you know, my best friend Brandon came when I started running the wine business full time. When we started VaynerMedia, Marcus, my brother's best friend, who's now my chief of staff 10 years later. I'm a very big fan of hiring friends and family, which most people don't believe in. I'm willing to fire my friends and family, <laughs> which is why I think hiring is great. <laughs> how, do you uh, frame, how do you frame that with them? Do you, do you tell easily, them that you, you make it yeah. awesome for them. Do you tell them up front though? Like you're just, you have to know that if you yes. don't perform, yes. you're gonna get fired. And if, the, if it's a firing, it's a very massage two year process, which is this is not working out. Yeah, right. Let's save face for you and let's set up something that makes you more money and makes you happier. Is it easier to do that in the States than it is here? Like it's yes. really hard to get. Yes. Yeah. America's big advantage is not ludicrous laws. Right. Right. Mate, that's been amazing. I actually run out of questions. Um, you're about to go on stage. I am. What do you hope that the audience gets out of you today? That's a great question. I always hope one thing, which is somebody changes their behavior if they're unhappy. Right on. Right on. Well, we're just going to round of applause. <laughs> Gary V, Thank it's you. been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching, guys. Thank you guys Sorry, for watching. Chuck.